Hello everyone, thanks for joining me. Today I want to talk to you about a really special holiday, uh, one of my favorite times of the year, Halloween. What a great time. Uh, you know, a nice holiday, uh, but the really fun thing, you know, is all the things that go with it. We get to dress up, uh, we get to, uh, you know, in, in some places go trick-or-treating, although, you know, maybe not with, if there's a sort of coronavirus situation, might not do too much trick-or-treating to be safe, but, you know, trick-or-treating, creating, carving uh, jack-o'-lanterns, uh, costumes, a lot of times Halloween parties at Learning Tree, we have a big Halloween party, uh, lots of exciting times. So let's talk a little bit about what this holiday is, right? Why do we do this? It's so strange, right? Put on all these crazy costumes and go out into the streets. It's so weird. Well, uh, it all goes back to a another holiday called uh, All Saints Day. Uh, and All Saints Day uh, was a day, and, and, and All Hallows' Eve uh, was a holiday where people believed that uh, the spirits of people who had died before, a long time ago, uh, that they would come back to earth, that those sort of like the ghosts would come back to earth uh, on that day, right? So it, it was a special holiday. People would get ready to, you know, celebrate with their families. Uh, in some countries like Mexico, they have a, a, a version of this holiday called Dia de los Muertos, which is where, you know, people will make like a table in their in their house and they'll put, you know, food there for their for the ghosts of their family. Uh, for maybe, you know, some of their family members who had died a long time ago. They put pictures of them up and they put food out. Uh, and, you know, they're saying like, you know, come back to us, come back to us uh, for one day. We can we can be together kind of. So it's a really nice holiday. So um, trick or treating and, and Halloween and all of this came from uh, that holiday originally. Now, um, so people believed, OK, that this night uh, was when the ghosts can come back to earth, right? So, or come, you know, wander around on, on the earth. So some people were worried about that, right? Oh, what if a scary ghost came, right? And it's nighttime on All Hallows Eve, uh, and the scary ghost comes and takes you away. So some people were worried about that. So they had a good idea. Uh, if I look like my normal self walking down the street, doop -ba -doop -ba -doo, and then the ghost comes and sees me. Maybe they'll come and take me, right? But what if I look like a ghost? What if I put on a ghost costume? I dress up like a ghost. And then if I'm walking around outside, right? Doop -ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doop -ba -doo, then if a ghost comes, is the ghost going to take me? No, not right. Because the ghost thinks, oh, look. It's another ghost, right? And the ghost will say, oh, hello. And then I would say, oh, hello, I'm a ghost too. But really, I'm not a ghost. And so that's kind of how this started, right? People kind of felt like, okay, if I dress like something spooky, right, I can stay safe. That's one of the, one of the reasons why people started dressing up. Um, nowadays, it's funny because a long time ago, you know, the costumes were all uh, supposed to be sort of spooky or scary. But now uh, people dress up in anything, you know, uh, superheroes or princesses or anything, right? You could be a jelly bean for Christmas, right? Or for <laughs> Christmas, for Halloween. You could be anything you want. Um, so, you know, but a long time ago, it was, you know, supposed to be sort of this, you know, you want to keep the scary things away from you. Um, so I have a picture here. You can see these kids. Uh, they've got their great, great costumes on. I can see a witch over here. Uh, here's a jack-o'-lantern with a cool jack-o'-lantern hat and sort of a little devil there and a skeleton over here. And you can see they're each holding a, a um, some kind of like a either a bucket or a container. And do you know what they're going to be putting inside there? Candy, right? But how do they get the candy? Well, they go trick-or-treating. So they're out walking around the streets, <clears throat> usually with their mom or dad in the background, and they go to people's houses this here we go and they knock on the door knock knock and uh the people because they know it's halloween they open up and when they open up the door the kids all shout trick or treat now trick or treat is funny that means uh, give us a treat or we will give you a trick means like we'll do something uh sneaky to you kind of um and so that's like the idea of this holiday, you know, of that, of this activity. So you're saying, give us a treat 
and then we won't do anything, uh, you know, sneaky to you. Um, but it's just sort of a funny, a funny thing. Not no one, people don't want to really be mean or, or something like that on Halloween. Um, but anyway, people carry like so. This lady at her house, you can see she's got a big bucket full of candy here. And when these kids show up and shout trick or treat, she's gonna take a piece of candy or two pieces of candy and give it to each of the kids. And then the kids will go to the next house and knock on the door, trick or treat. And by the end of the night, they're gonna have a bucket full of candy. So that's kind of you know some interesting things about. Uh, you know, what we do on that holiday, October 30, October 31st, Halloween. And remember, it came from another holiday called All Hallows Eve. You can see how the name is very close. Uh, All Hallows Eve, Hallows Eve, Halloween, right? You can see it's very close. So, okay. All right, let's look at this picture. Here is something you might see while you are trick-or-treating. Do you remember what these are called? Sure, some of you might know what they're called. These are Jack O. Do you remember the last word? Yeah, lanterns. Jack O. Lanterns. Jack O. Lanterns are usually in America, for example, um, or most places around the world, are pumpkins that have been carved uh, with faces, and then somebody puts a candle inside, like a little tiny candle, like this, uh, inside the pumpkin. Uh, and so this is another interesting thing, right? If you were trick or treating, you might see this. But why? Why do we have these Jack O. Lanterns? Well, that goes back a long, long time ago to a story from Ireland. And this story was about a man, not a very nice man. Uh, his name was Stingy Jack. Uh, he was sort of a mean guy. He was always playing tricks on people. Not a very nice guy. Now, when he died, when he died, his ghost didn't get to rest. Uh, because he had been so mean when he was alive, his punishment was that he had to wander around the earth forever in the dark. And so what he did was he took this, uh, this sort of root vegetable here called a, a radish or a turnip, and he carved sort of a little spot and he put a little burning piece of wood inside and that was his light, his lantern. So remember, his name is Jack, Stingy Jack, right? And here is his lantern. So Jack O Lantern means Jack of the lantern, or Jack who has a lantern. Lantern Jack is kind of his name. Um, and he was a ghost, and people believed that around Halloween time, he would come out and he would be wandering around the streets. And you don't want Stingy Jack to catch you, his ghost. You don't want him to catch you uh, out on the street because he might do something mean to you or, or take you away or play a trick on you. So what people started to do was to uh, make their own scary face lanterns and put them at their house, right? To keep these, um, these uh, ghosts and spirits away from their house, right? So they would put, uh, you know, carve different things, vegetables, um, fruit with a, with a scary face, sometimes put a candle inside, and then that would be to say to the ghosts, like, stay away from here, kind of, right? Scare the ghosts away. Now, uh, so today, uh, I thought it would be really fun if we tried to carve a uh, jack-o'-lantern together. Now, in Japan, it's a little bit tricky to find big pumpkins. This is a very small pumpkin, right? Um, usually, a pumpkin that we might carve would be, instead of this size, maybe it would be this size, right? That would be a nice big pumpkin to carve. Um, we can find them sometimes, but a lot of times it's tricky to find them. But I think we can do it with this little pumpkin too, although I've never tried to carve a pumpkin that's this small. Um, although, if it works, I think it's going to be a very cute little pumpkin, right? I think he's going to have a nice, cute little face. It's so, okay. I'm going to go through all the steps here uh, and all the things that we need. So, we need, uh, of course, we need a pumpkin or something. Uh, if you're not going to use a pumpkin, we'll talk about some other options later. Uh, you might be able to use something like a big squash. This would be really hard to carve, though, but it might look funny, right? A nice long face with maybe some funny eyes up here. Although I think it would be pretty tricky to, to carve. I've never tried. I think it would be pretty hard. Uh, but yeah, so we need uh, something to carve. We need a tool to carve it with. So I have a, a knife here. Uh, for this, you definitely want to make sure that you have your parents helping you uh, for your cutting, right? Uh, and then you need a, a spoon to scoop out uh, all of the stuff on the inside of this pumpkin. <clears throat> then, later, you need a little candle, 
uh, and some something to light your candle with. Um, or even better, um, at sometimes at some different shops, like the 100 yen shop, you might be able to find a little uh, light bulb uh, and that has a little tiny a battery inside it and you can flip a switch and it looks exactly like a candle. And it, it flickers a little bit like a fire and it looks really nice, exactly like a fire. So if you find one of those at the shop, you could put one of those inside and that would be even better because it's uh, safer than a candle, right? You could leave it on you know, in your bedroom and you don't have to worry about a fire. So, all right, <clears throat> now how do we get started with this? How do we carve a pumpkin? Well, the first step is to look around your pumpkin and to figure out where do you want to put the face. So on this pumpkin, there's sort of a funny uh, dent right here, and this side has some some funny marks. So I don't want to I don't want to carve on this side. I think I'm going to put the face kind of on this side over here. I think this is a, the best spot. All right? I'll put that pointing forwards for now. Um, so the first step after you find uh, after you sort of look at your pumpkin and decide where you're going to put your face, is we have to cut a hole uh, in the top so that that way we can uh, take this top off and we can start scooping out the stuff on the inside. Now I think on such a small pumpkin this might be a little bit tricky, uh, cutting, uh, not cutting, but uh, um, scooping out the stuff on the inside, but we'll see. We'll see what it's like. All right, so what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take, so remember, uh, ask your mom and dad to help you do this. I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to cut a uh, hole like this around this top of this pumpkin, just like this. Here we go. There we go. Right around this pumpkin. Right around. Doesn't really have to be perfect. When you carve jack o' lanterns, you'll learn that uh, you know any little mistake you make, it just makes the pumpkin look more interesting. So now I've cut all the way around. You can see, but actually, it's still stuck on. Do you see that? That's because the inside of this pumpkin has lots of stringy pumpkin flesh and lots of seeds. Now, if you're carving a pumpkin, uh, when I carve pumpkins every year, um, I never throw these seeds away um, because. I like to cook them in the oven. You can take these seeds and you can put a little bit of um, a little bit of uh, olive oil or butter and salt and pepper and roast them in the oven and it makes a nice crunchy snack. So I really like uh, pumpkin seeds every year. So I, I'm not going to throw those away. I'm going to save them for later. But my next step is going to be to start scooping away at this pumpkin flesh on the inside. So you see I'm taking my spoon and this you can definitely help your mom and dad with. You see, I can just scoop it away like this. Scoop it, scoop it, scoop it. And then uh, you want to get rid of some of it uh, because that will help uh, keep it. You want it to sort of dry out a little bit. Otherwise, it's going to, um, it'll get rotten a little bit faster. So if we scoop out some of that like that, that's pretty good. And uh, you can see very nice and smooth now on the inside. Uh, and this is our lid, right? So this can go back on, come on and off, right? All right, so our next step, now that we've cut off our lid, we're all ready. It's very cute, very nice. Our next step is going to be to scoop out the, the seeds and the uh, sort of stringy flesh that's on the inside of this pumpkin. So, all right, let's see how this goes. I've never tried it with such a small pumpkin. We'll see what it's like. All right, it goes in. So I usually put it in and I try to kind of scoop it around the side like this, kind of in a in a circle sort of with my spoon and oh it's working pretty well look at all those seeds oh perfect those are going to be delicious later so excited sometimes i like to put some spicy pepper on them garlic put a lot of different whatever seasonings you'd like you could even put some sweeter ones like sugar or cinnamon out some more. I'm going to bring my towel over here because there's a lot of seeds you can see coming out. Oh, there they come. Oh, great. Great, great, great. All right. This is working pretty well, actually, on this little pumpkin. So I'm just going to keep scooping out some of this pumpkin flesh on the inside. 
just using my my uh, spoon as like a little like a little shovel to dig and just dig around scoop 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 take that pumpkin flesh out here we come some more of the seeds all right this is working pretty well pretty well all right keep digging away the important thing is you really want to uh, make sure that you don't accidentally uh, dig a hole through the through the pumpkin, right? Otherwise, you're, you might have to change the, your uh, your design for your pumpkin. All right, this is coming along nicely. There we go. Don't be afraid to get your fingers dirty. It's just pumpkin, right? There we go. All right, scooping out a lot now. This pumpkin is almost empty on the inside. Just gonna go around a little bit more. If you go around the sides, it'll make the side wall a little bit thinner, which will make it easier to carve, easier to put your face on the, your, your pumpkin, your jack-o'-lantern face on. So if you can make your walls, the walls of the pumpkin, these, these walls right here, you can make them a little thinner by scraping. It'll make it a little bit easier to, to carve. All right. This is looking pretty good. There we go. I always like the smell of pumpkins. If you can find a little pumpkin and carve it, you can see. It reminds me of when I was a kid and I would carve pumpkins with my mom and my dad. Make different faces. There's a lot of very, very creative uh, pumpkin carvers that can carve some really exciting uh, faces and pumpkins. Are not just facing anything, yeah. big monsters or all sorts of things. All right, that's a pretty good place to stop. Let me scoot this out of the way. Let me get a tissue for my hand and let's see what we did. All right, so we've got a giant pile of seeds and pumpkin flesh over here. Uh, we've got our lid and we've got a nice hollowed out pumpkin. Hollowed means uh, it's empty on the inside. Right before there was all this pumpkin flesh on the inside, but we've taken that all out. And now we've got a nice uh, hollow pumpkin. We can put this lid back on. You can see it fits perfectly. And that will be our jack-o'-lantern. So, like I said before, we want to decide where do we want to put the face? Um, I said, I don't want to put it here where there's this big dent. And I don't want to put it here on top of all these bumpy things. Although maybe you do, right? Maybe you want to use this dent, um, you know, as part of the face. Uh, every pumpkin is a little bit different. You know, they some of them are a little bit, you know, shorter or taller or fatter or, or lumpier. So it's it's fun to look at your pumpkin and to decide, you know, where you can put uh, different things that are make your pumpkin more unique. All right, I'm going to use this side, this part right here. It's nice and smooth, and I think I can I can pick some good designs to put on there. So if you are carving the pumpkin um, with your mom and dad, right? Because uh, your mom and dad are going to use the knife. Uh, but you want to design the pumpkin, right? So what you can do is you can take a marker, maybe a black marker or a pencil even. A pencil works great, actually. And you can draw the face onto this pumpkin, right? Draw it with the pencil. Draw where you want your eyes to go. Uh, usually on a pumpkin, a lot of times like a triangle for the eyes, right? And then sometimes a tiny triangle for the nose. Um, and then many different kinds of mouths. Uh, you can be very creative with the mouth. You can have teeth or no teeth. You can make the pumpkin look like it's sh like uh, screaming, like, oh, uh, you can draw any kind of design you want, right? But remember, uh, your mom and dad are going to have to cut it out with a knife. So you don't want to put uh, too small details, like, you know, tiny, tiny teeth or something like that. It's better to use big shapes, like a, like big triangles for the eyes, um, you know, and um, sort of a big sort of smile with teeth for for the mouth you know, with big teeth. So, all right, so let's let's see what that's gonna be like here. I'm gonna carve um, two eyes first. So I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna put one eye over here. All right, there we go. Good. And I'm gonna draw the other side of the eye right here. Knife out. All right, perfect. 
perfect. And then I'm going to cut across for this first triangle. This is going to be great. Here it comes. It's always fun to pop out some of the pieces. So, all right, you can see I cut this eye and now if I take it out, you can see this triangle shaped eye. Here it is. Uh, you can see that's how thick it was. If we cut it a little bit thinner with the uh, spoon, it'll be a little bit easier to carve, but this was okay. This wasn't too bad. And there's our first eye, right? So let's see, where do you think I should put the other eye? Probably about here, don't you think? I think that would look pretty good. Let's put, let's put another eye over there on that side. All right, I'm gonna go like this. Good. And down like that. And then down like that. All right, let's pop this eye out. Oh. And there we go. Look at those two eyes, they're great. And you know, you might think like, oh, I wanted the lines to be flat or something like that, but no matter what you do, it always makes the pumpkin look sort of interesting. So it doesn't matter if it's exactly what you thought it would look like, if you wanted these lines to be tipped differently, no matter how you do it, it makes the pumpkin look cool. The fun thing with jack-o'-lanterns is that they don't have to look perfect, right? They can look any way you want. You know, they sort of look nice when they look a little, a little crooked, right? All right. So let's see here, for the uh, nose, I'm gonna give them just another tiny triangle here. Let's see. Let's carve just a tiny triangle right here. This is gonna be our tiny triangle nose. Here we go. Hmm. That's fun. Here we go, take a look at this. All right, that triangle came out and now we've got a tiny little triangle nose. Uh, I think this Trump, this pumpkin probably would have been, probably would have been better to, to scrape a little bit more out. I think if you're using a small pumpkin like this, you might wanna spend a little bit more time uh, scraping the inside uh, before you start carving. Um, especially on the on the front where you're going to be uh, carving the face. Um, that'll make it a little bit easier, but yeah, not bad so far. We've got two eyes and we've got a, ni a nice little triangle nose. All right, now we need a mouth. I'm going to put a big smiling mouth, uh, maybe with one tooth. That'll be kind of funny. So what I'm going to do is, uh, you know, if you were to draw your uh, mouth, I'm going to go like about here. I'm going to put one, one funny tooth right there. So I'm carving my tooth first. There we go. And then I'm going to carve the rest of the mouth right over to that tooth. There we go. And I'm going to carve this side of the mouth right over and up because I want him to be smiling. I like a nice smile on my jack-o'-lanterns. All right, and let's cut this up. There we go. And this side. It's a fun experience for me too to carve a, this small jack-o'-lantern. If you're carving a jack-o'-lantern at home, maybe it's your first time to carve a jack-o'-lantern, and it's my first time to carve a small jack-o'-lantern like this, so we're each trying something new. That's fun. It's always fun to try new things. <laughs> All right, let's see how he came out. Take out his teeth. Oh, I love it. Look at this funny guy. I'm gonna stick my knife in and carve out just a tiny bit more of that mouth to let the light through later. There we go. Cut down at the bottom. I'm gonna turn them around. Tell me what you think. 
All right, are you ready? I think he looks pretty funny, pretty cute. What do you think? <laughs> you like him? Yeah, jack-o'-lantern. There we go. All right, now, <clears throat> of course, we can put the lid back on, and he's all ready for, oh, oh, oh. he'll be all ready for uh, Halloween, but uh, we're missing one thing, right? What are we missing? Do you know? He's got eyes, he's got a nose. What are we missing? Do you remember the, the story about Stingy Jack? He was carrying around another thing, right? But uh, was he carrying it around? Uh, why was he carrying it around? Do you remember? Because he needed light. Ah, so we need to put a light inside. All right, so I've got a little candle here. Again, something you definitely want to do only with your parents. Not very safe uh, to play with uh, matches. Um, it's nice to look at a... At a uh, jack-o'-lantern with a real candle inside, but actually at my house, I like to use uh, the, those little electric ones because then you can have them glowing all night long and the, and the candle doesn't burn out. Uh, you can, um, you know, put them in your bedroom as a little night light. So it's much more fun, I think, with the, with the little lights from the 100 yen store. But for now, let's use this, this nice little candle. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna light this candle and I'm gonna set this candle inside here like that and then we're gonna be able to see it glow. It's pretty bright in here, so we might not be able to see it glow that easily, but let's take a look. All right, so. Here we go. We've got our, we've got our little candle. It's just barely starting to glow, just like that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it into the bottom Carefully, this is what you'd ask your mom and dad to help you with. There we go. Got my jack-o'-lantern here. Put the lid back on and we're all set. Now, uh, if it's dark enough, we would be able to see this jack-o'-lantern starting to have a little bit of glow uh, coming through, a little bit of light coming through the eyes and coming through the nose, and coming through the mouth, right? Um, and then, when you're ready to uh, put out the candle, all you have to do is take off the lid and blow. And your candle's all blown out. So now, okay, we talked about carving a jack-o'-lantern. That was a lot of fun for me, carving these little jack-o'-lanterns. I, I wanna do that again, that was great. I had a great time. Um, now the jack-o'-lantern, once you start carving it, uh, things like pumpkins and squash, they last a long time um, if, if they're, if they're you know, closed. But once you start cutting into the jack-o'-lantern, you start letting air uh, come into the jack-o'-lantern. And um, then what's going to happen is that this will start getting kind of yucky and old after a couple days. So, you know, you want to keep it, um, you know, you, you, you're only going to keep them after you carve them. You're only going to keep them for a couple of days because they're going to start getting kind of squishy and yucky like an old rotten apple or something like that. Um, but for that for that time, that's why, you know, it's best if you're going to carve it for Halloween, it's probably best to carve it, you know, very close to Halloween, maybe on Halloween or the day before Halloween, something like that. Um, but yeah, I like this guy. Very cute. Cute little pumpkin. Should we name him? Okay, I'll let you pick the name, all right? So look at his face, or her face. It could be a girl, I guess. You can decide. So here, look at this pumpkin's, this little jack-o'-lantern's face, and I want you to pick a good name, all right? Then when you see me at school, I want you to tell me what, what you've named my, my jack-o'-lantern. Okay, take a good look at the face and pick a great name. I'll try to pick a name too, but I'm not going to tell you what it is. I want to hear what your names are. So come and find me at Learning Tree and tell me, Oh, Mr. Gregor, I named your pumpkin. And tell me what the name is. I'm excited to hear. All right. I like that a lot. Now, I told you, right, it might be hard. Sometimes it's hard to find uh, pumpkins in Japan. Uh, some pumpkins are even smaller than this one. If you find the really small pumpkins, the sort of squished flat kind of pumpkins, those ones are gonna be really basically impossible to carve. Uh, you kind of need to find one of these sort of round uh, round pumpkins. Um, and if you can't find one of these, that's okay. 
you can still uh, have a you know really nice Halloween by finding something else to carve. Because remember, the original story, the original story, Stingy Jack didn't even have a pumpkin, right? So you don't have to carve a pumpkin, right? You can carve anything you want. Uh, here he was holding like a turnip or a radish. Um, and I have another picture here that I think is another really fun thing to carve. And I'd like to see uh, in the past, I've asked the saplings too to carve one of these. And I think this is a really fun, uh, it's a very different to a, to a pumpkin, but it looks really cool. You ready? Here it is. What did they carve here? It's a pineapple. It's a pineapple. So they carved it the same way. The first thing they did was they cut off the top and then they took out the insides, scooped out all of the insides all the way down. And remember, the thinner you make the walls, uh, the easier it's going to be to carve. And then they carved a couple uh, triangle eyes and a funny mouth. And then they put the top back on and they used a candle or a light on the inside. And I like this design because, uh, first of all, in Japan, sometimes it's easier to find pineapples uh, than it is to find pumpkins. But also, uh, the bumpy outside of the pineapple looks really cool, kind of like a monster skin or something. And then the, uh, the top, the plant growing at the top looks like hair for the jack-o'-lantern. So I really, really like this style. Um, but it doesn't have to be that either. You know, there's a lot of different things that you can carve. Pumpkins, um, you could carve, uh, you know, a, let's see, what's another nice thing to carve? Like a melon, like a, you know, sort of a, yeah, a big melon you could carve. Um, carving radishes and things like that. Now, some of those things, uh, you might be able to carve it, um, but you might not really be able to put a candle inside very easily, but that's okay. It's all about sort of finding funny things, finding funny fruits or vegetables that you can, you know, cut a, a little face in. So remember, do this activity with your mom, uh, or your dad, because you're gonna need someone to help you uh, with the cutting, right? Someone to help you with the cutting and someone to help you uh, with the light if you're using a candle. But remember, the best ones, I think, are those, those lights from the dollar, the 100 yen store. So, uh, so yeah, this was a video about how you can enjoy the Halloween holiday at your house. I hope uh, that you have fun. I hope you can find a pumpkin to carve uh, or, or a pineapple to carve or something else. And if you do, take a picture of it and bring it in and show me because I want to see it. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time.